friends, Nini here. So earlier, I tried recording in the backyard because I just want some light. It's uh, fairly, not really sunny, but it's bright outside. And my gosh, up until now, I'm still sweating buckets. So excuse me if I'm, yeah, not on my tip-top most tip, or I'm not on my most tip-top shape. But yeah, so I want to share with you the system that I kind of developed for myself. So it's a DIY system. Around here so um, I was just fed up with the pandemic uh, a year ago I mean um, I received an inquiry from um, a bride because I had an installation in a bridal shop and I had several inquiries with regards to a paper flower wall and um, to cut the story short I did it and I really found that I love the connection that I, I thought I was pandemic proof because I was an in I, I am an introvert. I was an ambivert <laughs> back in the Philippines, but, but I'm very much an introvert now. However, the pandemic was just too much. I love the connection that I had with the bride and the other vendors. And I, I just thought, hey, why don't I make it, um, I, I mean, why don't I offer this uh, for 2021? So that's why I kind of developed uh, my system that works for me in terms of um, setting up the paper flower wall. So what's my situation? So I don't have a large vehicle. Um, probably a lot of you guys would um, relate to that. I wanted to try this out. I don't, uh, I just, yeah, I want to try this out. I don't see myself investing in a vehicle. Um, probably like, uh, hopefully like um, in a couple of years, yes, but like not right now. So I'm not investing in a van. In my first paper flower wall install, I did rent a U-Haul, which cost me around $200, like the rental and the um, fuel, which is a bit too much. Because of course, um, if you're going to charge, then of course the um, that and the labor and then also there's, I, I think it's just too much if I'm going to rent for every event. That's why I just borrowed my husband's car. So my husband's car is a medium-sized SUV. And um, with this system, I have kind of, uh, I was able to fit enough flowers plus this modular structure or stand in it that's good for an 8x8 wall. So yeah, so that's why I'm gonna share um, this system or this structure that um, I've, again, developed for myself. So earlier, I tried buying uh, a cheaper version of a stand. It just didn't work. <laughs> That's why I'm a I was asking uh, one of my friends that also does uh, paper flowers, like, what are you using? That's why she recommended this system. It's in the description and also in the document that I'm going to share for free. So um, check that out. Uh, yeah, I'll place the link there of uh, this um, kind of heavy duty system. So it's heavier, the bases are heavier, and it's made, I believe, of al aluminum. I have to check, but it's lightweight in terms of the poles, but the bases are heavier. Um, even the poles are kind of lightweight, they are thicker. That's why compared to the, the one that I um, bought um, the first time, the, again, the poles are thicker, so it kind of works. Um, so this system works, however, it's just like a U. It was not enough because um, it's just like a U and to like place two uh, sheets or two panels of 4x8 foam, I need something that would support the middle and also like the, the bottom part. And there, there was no option with that structure. That's why I made my own from PVC pipes. Also, on a side note, so the first wall that I tried, 
I used um, um, a recommendation from uh, another maker to use uh, PVC pipes. It didn't kind of, it didn't work for me because it's too much work. I mean, if if it's purely PVC pipes, it's an extra work. So that's why, like, just for this structure, uh, the PVC pipe works. So without further ado, I'm gonna um, discuss the additional um, what they call this. Uh, pieces that I added in the structure. So we have the um, inverted U of the structure already, so we're good with that. Um, we need something on the bottom, as I've mentioned. So and on the middle, and uh, so we need four additional pipes. Yeah, the bottom part it needs to be cut because we need to support the middle and um, with the bottom part one I, and with the middle part one full PVC pipe won't fit in my husband's car so that's why I had to cut them so um, so a tip when you're buying in Lowe's for example and you just have like a middle sized car like me or a sedan like me so I suggest uh, getting a PVC cutter ahead of time or like uh, you can buy it uh, together with the PVC pipes but let, yeah, I mean buy it first and then use it or you can ask somebody to cut there but um, I was just lucky the first time that I bought some PVC pipes that the um, uh, sales guy there was willing to cut it for me but it's just better to have your own PVC cutter and then cut it there in the store and then pay for it then uh, late uh, okay so let's discuss the PVC pipes first so for the bottom part so I labeled them so right bottom uh, and then left bottom so we have the okay left and the right so I've bought uh, the structure spools with me so the diameter of this is one and a half inches and then actually the top part um, tube or cylinder is a bit thicker uh, because it has this that's, that kind of locks um, the other part. So this is thicker at, um, it's kind of, it's a bit more than one and a half so but um, with something that can be tight uh, like this it's just better um, for this uh, tubing to be a little bit bigger so first of all we will be needing three of this and uh, the inside diameter is uh, one and three fourth of an inch so and um, this pipes that I'm using, I'm currently using as a middle and um, bottom support is um, the outside diameter is an inch but the inside is uh, three-fourths and um, like right here uh, the label says it's, it's three-fourths so um, that's the one I suggest I'm getting and yeah make sure that um, this part fits your uh, three fourth um, size PVC pipe. So we need three of this. So two on the bottom parts of our stand and uh, one in the top middle part of the stand. So um, yeah. um, so so for the bottom part again, we will be needing um, two. So you can see the uh, measurements, the exact measurements that I use. It will depend on the structure you're going to get, but with this particular structure, this, um, that those are the me measurements that I used, and um, it's in the document that I'm gonna share for free. So just check the description um, below. Anyway, so we need two of the these, and then to connect them, it won't detach anymore. But um, this um, coupling, like a, a cross one, because. Um, as you can see, this is kind of elevated and we need something that would also elevate the middle part. So th this is a good one, the cross, the cross part. And for the middle, you can actually 
get um, just the straight coupling, but uh, this is the one that I, 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 have, I have on hand. And then just a uh, note, I did um, punch the hole or poke the hole on it. So I had a string in my first, uh, in my uh, last December install. So I had this tied into this uh, hole and then so it, it acted as a support for the wall. So yeah, it, I was able to use it. So yeah, I do suggest um, using something like this. So you have an option to like tie something in the uh, middle back part of the structure. And then the top part would be connected to this. Which will then go on top. So this will be your middle support. Okay, now, how about the middle support? How does my two panels uh, be supported by this middle support? So what I did... This is very DIY. You can go for something more durable like a plastic board or even a wood if you have a, um, something to cut the wood. This is very DIY but it works because again, I, I just, I, I tried. Um, I mean, I, I just wanted to try the wall so it kind of works for me. So, but I'm gonna give the measurements nonetheless. So um, whatever material you choose to use, uh, you can cut that side. So this goes in the middle and, then, and as you can see, I have Velcro um, stick-ons there and then the backing, my backing also have Velcro stickers and then that kind of attaches in this middle support. So what did I do to like, um, how do I attach them on my middle support? So how do I place that? I drilled two holes or like um so in my middle structure i have four panels or like four small panels to support the middle part so i i uh, labeled them one two a two b and then three so my intent here is to use materials that i can reuse so mean, meaning so velcro and not just uh, double-sided tape and then um the velcro straps and not just cable uh, what they call this cable ties because it's like that's a one use material so i was thinking why don't i use like two uh, velcro velcro straps but then it might slip that's why for uh so as you can see my panel has two supports like one panel uh two supports each and one is a velcro tie and then the other one is a wire that goes vertically so this is horizontal and then this is vertical so it kind of like sticks it kind of sticks on the pipe so let's begin with the bottom middle first so this goes like this uh let's look for three so this is three so the first thing that i usually do is so I used a galvanized wire that though that uh, that were just my scraps from um, attempting a flower wall before. So I uh, full disclosure, I didn't use Velcro before. I used like um, wires to like poke in the uh, to poke in the insulation foam. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not advisable to do that, but. I yeah I did learn that it, it was not vi it was not viable it was not an advisable thing to do so anyhow so these are just like my scrap wires so what I'd like to do is like um, yeah, poke it like that so insert it like this and since since this is malleable or pliable so I just Like that, and then I close this um, strap, and that's it. So I do that on the other three small panels, 
and so it fits, it doesn't um, slide off. Yeah, so that's that. So let's go set up our panel. So placing these panels can be time consuming. So um, this one you can place in like prior to your setup. So let's do that before we uh, fully assemble our structure. So my idea here is that labeling really saves time um, because you know like where to place what. So like for example, this is one, so this goes on the top part. So I have a label here, so this is one. And then I have 2A, which is the uh, bottom, uh, sorry, um, the top middle part. And let's attach our 2B. So here. Okay, so we've done it before this beforehand, so that would save us time during the install. For example, if, uh, let's pretend we're installing. So, so come on, let's set up our stand. set up the structure, the next thing that we're going to do is attach the panels. So the panels is a foam board insulation or uh, an insulation foam board rather. So I usually buy my insulation foam from Lowe's. Um, there's also uh, some that are available from Home Depot but um, upon checking I think the one from Lowe's are cheaper I think. Um, yeah, you, you need to check uh, your local hardware stores. So I usually buy half an inch because it's cheaper <laughs> compared to uh, the the one inch one. So, so far, it's um, it holds up. It's not really that flimsy. However, uh, most of, uh, or so far, all of my installs are indoors. So I can't really tell if um, it's better. I mean, technically or theoretically, it's better to use a thicker one for outdoors. But so far, since most of my installs are indoors, so I just use half an inch. And then, so what I usually do is, again, we have a, we don't have a large vehicle or a car or a van. So what I do is I just bring a cutter uh, in Lowe's or in any hardware store. And then I cut it there. So I cut it in three. And uh, like the two flaps on the right side and left side are shorter than the one in the middle so I can close it. And then when I cut, I don't cut the like the, the foil. So that, that's what holds my board. So I can like fold it and close it. So far I've used uh, the board that I'm using right now like multiple times and it's kind of like falling a bit but it's not really like destroyed yet. I mean it still works. Probably you can use it like I, I can say like four to five times more. 
it's not bad for um, so one board is about seven something dollars uh, plus tax probably like it's eight ish dollars um, like eight dollars each and of course um, both of them like so almost sixteen sixteen dollars for both the boards not bad so yeah that's what I do so just go to your hardware store bring a cutter and also of course like uh, a tape measure measure it um yeah i'm gonna again this these are the measurements and then um fold it and then take it home